Hey guys, Andy here. It's been a little while since there's been an Android phone that's created like a lot of hype um, and has looked quite interested, it's sort of piqued my interest at least. But today we are taking a look at the Nothing Phone 1. Interesting box. Um, which definitely has done that. It looks a bit different. It looks like they're trying some new things. Um, so I thought I'd check it out. So today is just the unboxing, it's not the review. We'll have a bit of a look at things, a bit of a first look. Um, but if you want to see the actual review, make sure you subscribe. But yeah, today we are going to unbox and take a first look at the Nothing Phone 1. So my first problem I had, I ordered it directly from Nothing. Um, £399 for the 8 gig, 128 gig version. And it was due on the 27th, I think. And then a few days after I'd ordered it, I found out I was going to Porto for the week with work, which is great. But at the same time, I was like, ah, I can't receive the phone now. Um, and then I realized it's actually launching on the 21st, which is today. And someone said, oh, it's on Amazon. Brilliant, went to Amazon, canceled my nothing order, tried to start, or started to place the order on Amazon, then realized it said, yeah, delivery on the 26th. Well, that's no good either, I'll fly on the 25th. Um, someone else said, well, actually, or maybe I just saw, I think I just Googled it, so I wonder who else is selling it. O2 is selling it, they do the O2 refresh, which I've used in the past. It's normally relatively easy to cancel the contract part and you keep the phone, so it's effectively still 399. So I've ordered that, it was a bit of a palaver, it's not that easy with the O2, they, they, they're just, oh, anyway. And then annoyingly, I've seen today, I could have ordered off Amazon, and they say they could have delivered it before 7 p.m. Either way, it is here now, it's literally just been delivered. And first thing you notice is it's kind of a cool box. So some of the comments, you probably have already seen Marcus Brownlee's video, and he talks about they're sort of favoring a bit of style over maybe performance. Um, and you can see that from the box, I suppose. It looks like, I almost don't want to rip through this box, but it looks like that's the way in. There we go. Isn't that that's kind of weird, but cool and different. Oh, it's not padded, it's just, well, it's kind of hard padding. So I think that must be the less. Leave the phone just for the moment. These are like kind of the, whatever, instructions, the doc documentation, I guess. Oh, charging cable. USB Type-C, but then, uh, oh. I mean, that's quite funky as well. Glass handled pin ejection tool and reinsert it. Now the exciting bit. Da, da, da. So as you can see, this is the black version. You can't get the white in the eight gig, 128 gig, which is what this is. I, would, I think I would have liked the white and I, I, was, I almost went the 12 gig RAM 256 gig storage route, but I think I was waiting till middle of August for that. And I thought, no, I need to get my hands on it now. It's harder to get into than most. Oh, and there she is. That's a very glassy back. <laughs> but now it's I'm slightly conflicted because. I sort of agree with the comments saying it looks a lot like an iPhone, which I think it does, but I can't lie, I do, I mean, I don't know, if you're long time subscribers, you may remember how I used to go on about Slabo phone, and I like the Slabo phone. I don't like curved screens and this and the other. I like just a nice slab of device like this is. Um, yeah, it's very, it's, it's kind of, I don't know, it's more glassy than I thought. I don't know if that makes sense or not. So we've got the power button on the one side, we've got the volume buttons on the other side, we've got the one of the speakers down the bottom, SIM tray, USB Type-C. I guess that's noise cancelling mic at the top. I think the top speaker one concern, I, th I think I've heard the speakers aren't particularly good. I do like listening to podcasts through the phone speaker. Quite a lot of the time I make calls using the, uh, the speaker rather than the earphone, if that makes sense. Nothing. Do you notice I've not made a single nothing joke yet? I'm, they're just not funny, are they? I think. 
Um, that is part of that branding of the whole dot matrix you might have noticed on the box if you're using that. Let's go through a few of the specs. So it's 193 and a half grams. It feels, to me, it feels lighter. It feels really light. Maybe it's just because it is such a slab o phone, you're expecting it to be heavier. Um, we are running Android 12, but nothing OS. It's their own version. Um, it's 8.3 millimeters thick. Obviously there is a camera bump there for the cameras, we'll come to them in a second. But that's quite thin. Um, I think I mentioned it's in white or black. The fingerprint sensor is under the screen, nothing sort of on the edges or the back. It's a Qualcomm Snapdragon 730, that doesn't sound right though. There we go, 778G, sorry. I think maybe it's, I don't know. yeah, 778G plus 5G, six nanometer chipset. Uh, it's octa-core processor, Cortex A78, um, -a -a, Cortex A55, Adreno 642L, Honestly, I don't entirely know what that means. You know, I, I don't, it doesn't sound familiar. Um, I've mentioned, I think this is 128 gig of storage, eight gig of RAM. It does come in a, you've got a 12 gig step and a step to the 256. And for each of those steps, you pay 50 pounds more. You can't get 256 with eight gig. So it's eight gig 128, 12 gig 128, 12 gig 256. And each of those steps is 50 more pounds, being 499 at the top. UFS 3.1 file system, which I think is probably fairly standard. Well, yeah, maybe. Stereo speakers, we'll see. NFC. The screen is OLED. Um, it says 500 nits typical, but 1,200 peak. That's really bright. Um, 128 hertz, 120 hertz, which is, I mean, as fast as you're going to get at the moment. 6.55 inches. Um, 1080 by 2400, 20 by 9 ratio, about 402 pixels per inch, and it's all under Gorilla Glass 5. The screen strikes me as pretty high spec. Um, quite often in budget devices, the screen screen and the camera are the two things that are often not so good. But the screen sounds very good. The cameras, 50 megapixel f1.9 24mm wide, and a 50 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide. Um, on the main camera, face detection, autofocus, optical image stabilization, image stabilization, go on, Ben, I've not been drinking anything, I don't know what's going on, um, as well as, I'm fairly sure, electronic image stabilization. Um, can a video 4K, 30 frames per second, 1080 can do up to 60 frames per second. The front-facing camera is 16 megapixel f2.5 wide angle, which can do 1080p uh, 30 frames a second as well. The only thing to mention is the battery, 4,500 milliamp hour LiPo non-removable. Uh, fast charges at 33 watts, which says it will go 50% um, in 30 minutes, or fully charged in 70. Wireless charging at 15 watts, which is not bad, and reverse wireless charging at five watts. Okay, I mean, I don't think I've yet once used reverse wireless charging for anything, but maybe it's handy to have. Um, power delivery 3.0 and quick charge 4.0. So the specs, the specs all sound very good for £399. I suppose my two concerns going in, the speakers and the cameras. So, um, here we go, let's skip that for the moment. Connecting to Wi-Fi. So I'll do the usual, I will, um, I'll get connected, I'll get a few things installed, and then I'll come back and have a bit of a first look at how it performs. So I'm logged in, I'm set up generally, and I'm just running Geekbench 5. The results should come through any moment. And I have to say, I'm liking this so far, I'm really liking it. I do like the Slabo phone. I think it, it feels really premium. Feels, and here's the score. 2856, I'm not gonna lie, it's a long time since I've done Geekbench 5 tests, I can't remember how that does. I think, I think that scores quite well though. 2856, I'll try and put a little graphic up in the corner comparing it to other devices, but that's a pretty good score, I think. Um, I have to say, I haven't noticed any issues performance-wise. It isn't a top-end, it's not the 888 um, processor, but for 399, you shouldn't be expecting that, quite honestly. It is a mid-range processor. I've not noticed, there was one slight bit of sort of jerkiness, but it was installed, you know, so you, you almost expect that when the phone is initially setting itself up, it's doing a lot of stuff. Um, and after that, it's generally felt quite smooth. That's a little jerky there. But 
so far, I'm quite impressed. As I said, I just like the feel of it. The screen is nice and vibrant. And it's got that sort of, almost the image is floating on the top of the glass. Um, put a couple of widgets in place. I've run Geekbench for seeing that. So let's... Uh... <laughs> We'll see where it goes, but uh, having gone through those analysis of those four, I guess I'm not that surprised. What about the Ravens and Lamar Jackson, Andrew? Because it's so interesting for all. So in some way, my fears have been slightly set aside for the speaker because the volume seems quite good. It does sound a little tinny. I mean, it's a phone speaker. It's not going to have amazing bass, but it does. It's a little tinnier than, for example, my Pixel 6. I'm not overly concerned about that when I'm listening to podcasts or speaking to somebody on the phone. It's more about the volume and can I hear what's being said. Um, I set up the fingerprint sensor, only on my thumb. The only time it failed at the moment was when I came in from the side because I didn't think about it. I didn't set it up and it worked fine that time. I set it all up pretty much all straight heads up. So it's failed once on me um, and then I kind of moved around and went again and it was fine. What else, what else? So I tried the camera, I've taken a few photos outside, I tried regular, I tried then the wide angle, I tried then the zoom. Um, they look okay to me. I mean, I need to wait till I've had a proper good look at them because it took a little while to sink in, but um, they all look, you know, they seem to have reasonably, well, it's not the wide angle. The wide angle looks a little bit washed out actually but the zoom and the regular, they look okay. But yeah, the wide angle, uh, we'll see, we'll see. I'll, obviously I'll do more, um, a bit more detailed check. I then did a portrait photo using the front facing camera. It looks okay. I then sort of turn it around, use the volume to take a picture using the main camera, which I think is a, I think the colors look a bit better on that. And just bit, I mean, what was that bit? Was that a notification? I guess it was, interesting. Uh, what else did I do? I did a macro shot of it like a broken snail, snail shell. It looks okay. I was really quite close to it on that. It looks to have done a reasonable job. Took a random photo of just the junk um, outside. Some sort of reasonably close up of the greenery. And then came inside in the board game collection because it was quite dark the, when the uh, curtains are drawn to keep the heat out. Um, so it's, it's quite dark, but that looks a reasonable photo. The colors look pretty true. So again, it's very early days to make judgment on the lenses, but they look okay, just that wide angle. I'll have to take a few more because that did look quite, the colors didn't look right on that. Could be could be adjusted with a software update actually, to be fair. And think about it, I think it did say there was a there was an update to, to, to do and I haven't done it yet. So we'll see. Anyway, it is just a first look at this point. So yeah, I don't know, I, I really like it. I've not mentioned the I've not mentioned the LEDs on the back. Let's just plug the power in. Oh, I was I was expecting it to to be pulsating. Maybe I've got to do that in settings somewhere. We'll see. I also thought that it automatically lit up when you sort of. So I'm holding the phone. I put it down. Nothing. Okay, we'll see. It might be in settings. It might be part of this update. I've literally just booted the phone up and started playing with it and showing you what I'm doing. So there you go. Early impressions though. Just unplug it again. I really like it. I really like it. It's a nice screen. It feels really good. Performs nice and slick. For 399 it seems like it's a good price. Um, this is just the unboxing and first lock. I will do a full review. I'm in Porto for a week. And then my mum's stay. I don't know when I'll get the reviews done, but in about a week's time, roughly, roughly, I'll get the actual review out. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments down below. But for now, my name's Andy. I'll catch you all again soon.